Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the So Brothers channel. And today we're gonna be doing a versus video between the Nike LeBron 19 and the Nike LeBron 20. So these shoes are absolutely uh, the highest price shoe. I mean, I guess besides the Wild 10, the Wild 10 is like 220, but from Nike, it's the highest price basketball shoe and uh, it's going for 200 bucks. If you guys wanna cop either of these shoes, I try to leave in the fair link in the description box, but let's get it started off with the Tractiones. And yeah, the LeBron 20 is way better. It actually has top tier traction. It's on par with the PG6, the Curry 9s, all the good tractions that you can get or amazing tractions that you can get right now. It's on par with that. Uh, the LeBron 19 was terrible. Amazingly bad is what I would call the LeBron 19 traction. I mean, uh, even when I was playing in it for a long time and try to break in this traction, I never got a good bite. You know, just sliding around all the time, sliding around everywhere. I mean, it wasn't dangerous and it wasn't sliding around like crazy, but like it would just slide and it would slide a couple of inches and never really got a good bite. So yeah, the LeBron 20 is way, way better. And I feel like the LeBron 20 would also be a better option for outdoor use. I mean, we have small nubs here in the LeBron 19. I guess it is a pretty hard rubber, but the nub traction pattern doesn't seem too durable. And then LeBron 20, I mean, although the, uh, the grooves are kind of like on the thinner side of things, uh, the grooves are deep and also the rubber is pretty hard. So I feel like LeBron 20 will also be better for outdoor use. So pretty much in every category, the traction, uh, the LeBron 20 is way, way better, superior. All right, moving on to the heel to toe transition. Also, the LeBron 20 is a little bit better in my personal opinion because uh, here in the forefoot, right? So here in the heel, super soft in both of the shoes. I mean, there's a lot of compression uh, from the LeBron 19 as well. So it didn't really have a problem with the heel. But then here in the forefoot, we have a nice curved shape and we have some nice flex. Look at that. Uh, but here in the LeBron 19, there's absolutely zero flex. It's the stiffest sole shoe ever. And also it's pretty damn flat, right? So yeah, it definitely doesn't feel as smooth here in the LeBron 19 than the LeBron 20, uh, in my personal opinion. And also a nice little touch is that the LeBron 20 has a carbon fiber midfoot chain plate as opposed to the LeBron 20, which just has crazy plastic. Look at that. Look at all this damn plastic. This is all plastic right here, right? And you see all this plastic too. Um, so <laughs> yeah, heel to toe transition is better in the LeBron 20. Moving on to the cushioning setup. So yeah, the LeBron 20 is way better as well, in my personal opinion, right? I mean, cushion is subjective, but I feel like uh, most everyone would like the LeBron 20 cushioning setup better than LeBron 19, right? So first of all, court feel. Court feel is a million times better in the LeBron 20. Uh, it's just way lower to the ground. The LeBron 19 is, you're so damn high up off the ground that you definitely feel it. And uh, impact protection also isn't that much better. You know what I mean? Like impact protection is top tier in the LeBron 19, but also here in the LeBron 20 is really, really good because of this Kuchlon. I had zero issues with like my foot hurting. And also here in the fourth, we have a Zoom Turbo unit. And also uh, the Zoom Turbo unit, or I guess the cush cushion here in the forefoot is better in my personal opinion, because the LeBron 19, I mean, look at this crazy Zoom unit here in the forefoot, right? And it's just like a, like a trampoline effect, you know, it's kind of like a spring. So it, you just like kind of feel the forefoot bounce, you know what I mean? But here in the LeBron 20, the zoom turbo unit is pretty much right underneath your foot. So you can feel the zoom unit underneath your foot, which feels better in my personal opinion. Uh, because, you know, I like step in comfort a little bit more than just like a trampoline effect. So the LeBron 20 is a better overall, like all around cushioning setup. Uh, the LeBron 19 is just too much. Like it's too high up off the ground, too much impact protection, too much compression from uh, this, this Air Max unit. So yeah, the LeBron 20 cushioning setup is just better. All right, moving on to the material. So honestly, the LeBron 19 isn't terrible. Uh, I mean, here in, here in the forefoot, it's not terrible, right? So we have this like plasticky material. Uh, it's like a plastic mesh, I would say. It's, it's actually quite thin, but here the LeBron 20 is a little bit thinner and also like easier to move with my fingers. It conforms your foot a little bit better as well, especially when you break it in. Here in the midfoot, it stays pretty damn thin, but all, here in the LeBron 19, we have this, remember this plastic <laughs> on the lateral and also here on the medial side for some reason. And then here in the ankle, I mean, as far as the padding goes, the LeBron 20, actually they're around the same and the, here in the back of the shoe, um, 
Uh, the LeBron 20 feels a little bit better as far as the padding goes because it's like this nice memory foam like material. It feels great in the back of the shoe. So for quality, I would say the LeBron 20 is better. It's using a lot less plastic as well. And also in my opinion, it feels better on foot too, just because it's a little bit softer, right? And also there's a lot less bulk, especially like here in the back of the shoe the, for the LeBron 19, it's just too much, right? So there's that. Moving on to the fit, I went true to size for both of the shoes and I would say the LeBron 20 fits a little bit more snug so uh i mean if you want a really snug fit lengthwise then go true to size but for most people i would suggest going up half a size for the lebron 19 however it's still a nice snug fit for me so lengthwise i was good to go true to size but uh if you want a little bit more room then go up half a size as well for the lebron 19. Uh, just the lebron 20 is a little bit more snug lengthwise right uh, width wise they're around the same and the here in the toe box is around the same as well uh, it's a pretty snug fit here in the toe box. I can barely curl my toes up, which I like. So yeah, uh, both of these shoes are pretty much tied up for fit. They both fit me very, very well. Uh, moving on to the support and lockdown. Um, so for lateral containment, both of these shoes were amazing too, right? So uh, here in the LeBron 20, we have a very supportive material. We have this guardrail. We have this double swoosh, which actually does add a little bit of rigidity to this material. And then an internal TPU heel counter, right? Here in the LeBron 19, same thing. I mean, we have a very supportive material that we have the foam coming up, acting as a sidewall. So lateral containment was good for me here in the LeBron 19 as well. Uh, also lateral stability, it was really good for me for both of the shoes. However, the LeBron 19 is a lot wider, right? Look at this. Look at how wide the LeBron 19 is, right? Look at this outrigger here in the forefoot, right? And also here in the heel, look at how much wider it is. And they had to do that. You know, they had to make it super wide because of the Air Max, right? And the zoom unit because it, it com compresses a lot, right? And because it compresses a lot, uh, it feels a little unstable, you know, like in the LeBron 18, 17, 16, and 15, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, they had to do that, but here in the LeBron 20, it's not as high up off the ground and there's not like crazy air units where it feels a little unstable. So even though the LeBron 20 is a little bit narrower, I had zero issues with lateral stability. So support and lockdown was very good for me for both of them, honestly. Uh, ankle support, obviously the LeBron 20 is a low. LeBron 19 is pretty much a high top, but there's not a crazy amount of ankle support. You know what I mean? Like this, this ankle part definitely does like feel a little flimsy, you know, and it's not super stiff or anything. It doesn't restrict ankle movement that much, right? I mean, there's still, it's still pretty good. And obviously if you want something around your ankle and maybe like a little bit of ankle support, then obviously go with the LeBron 19, but it's not amazing for ankle support. So uh, there's that. Moving on to the weight. I mean, <laughs> uh, the LeBron 19 is the heaviest LeBron ever. It comes in at 18.1 ounces, which is absolutely insane. LeBron 20 is way lighter. It's 12.84 ounces, right? So yeah, uh, if you want the lighter shoe, get, go for the LeBron 20. If you want the more responsive shoe as well, if you want to feel quicker on your feet, then the LeBron 20 is way better because the traction is so damn good. The LeBron 19, you're sliding around all over the place, terrible traction, you don't feel quick on your feet. LeBron 20, you feel really quick on your feet. M uh, materials feel minimal, and also uh, it feels way lighter for the LeBron 20 as well. So yeah, uh, it feels way better on foot. Moving on to the ventilation, uh, the LeBron 20 is a little bit better because there is this underlying material here in the 19, which allows for zero airflow. The LeBron 20, um, there is also an underlying material, but there's just a tiny bit of airflow, like a little bit more than LeBron 19. So ventilation is a little bit better and also there's less stuff on your ankle, right? Uh, as far as the aesthetics go, LeBron 20 way better. Uh, I feel like most people would agree, right? I, I don't know who in their right mind would think the LeBron 19 is better, but obviously it's it's subjective, so it's fine if you think it is, but um, I feel like most people would say the 20, and I would say the 20 as well. So uh, there's the aesthetics there, uh, wrapping things up. Yeah, obviously get the LeBron 20. LeBron 19 was a huge disappointment for me last year. Super heavy, terrible traction, cushion was too much, you know what I mean? Uh, LeBron 20, they improved uh, upon everything. And also, I feel like most people would enjoy this shoe. You know, whatever position you play, whatever play style you have, the LeBron 20, will, it's got you covered. So yeah, I would 100% in pretty much every situation, recommend the LeBron 20. I guess the only reason to get the LeBron 19 is, I don't know what the, I guess, impact protection, but also, like I said, the LeBron 20 is still really good. So yeah, I don't know why you would pick the LeBron 19, but uh, my recommendation would be 
uh, to get the LeBron twin. So anyways, that's my reverses video between the 19 and the 20. Again, if you guys want to cop either of these shoes, I try to leave an affiliate link in the description box. But that's it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.